Hello, you are welcome to today's lesson. We'll be looking at what you can see on the board on the screen. National Examinations Council 2024 National Common Entrance Examination, that's NCEE, Paper 2, Aptitude Test, Part A, Quantitative and Vocational Aptitude. That is um, where we are going to concentrate for today. So we'll be looking at the quantitative reasoning of common entrance. Let's go straight to the questions. Part A, quantitative aptitude. Um, a lot of students, they avoid quantitative aptitude and it's quite amusing because this is one of the easiest parts of mathematics. All you need to do is to read the instruction and try to understand what the instruction is talking about. For the instruction here, the question says, the series of problems below are based on quantitative reasoning. Before answering the questions, study the sample that precedes each set and use it to solve the problems in that set. So, there is a sample in this set. Let's look at the sample. Here, we have sample A. Now, for quantitative reasoning, um, I want you to to know that to answer questions, you must have the essential operations in your mind. You can think of minus, plus, um, multiplication, division, or even square or square root. Now for this sample, three times four, we give us this 12. Okay, you can probably, if you have tried addition before, you can try subtraction, you can try division. But since this is 12, I know that 3 plus 4 cannot give me 12. 4 minus 3 cannot give me 12. 4 divided by 3 cannot give me 12. That's why I just thought of multiplication straight. Then I'll check if it works with the next sample. 7 times 5 will give me 35. So it works. So uh, 11 times 5 is 55. So I know that I've gotten a sample that works. For question number 1 here, 9 times 4 to give you... 36. To get this one, the digit in the left and right boxes, 12 divided by 3 is 4, 12 divided by 4 is 3. So 36 divided by 9 will give me 4, okay? And 9 times 4 will give me 36. Alright, so let's look at the next question, which is question 2. Question two is direct. Five times four, okay, we give us 20, which is option D, and that's the answer. We move down to question three. Question three, we need to think what times nine will give me 54. I already know is six, but if that will take your time, you can just divide. 54 divided by nine is six, and six times nine is 54. Now why this is so easy for me is because I understand the sample here. So understanding the sample is the most important part of quantitative reasoning. For sample B, we have a sample. So we need to figure out what's happening here. We have 5, we have 9, we have 106. We have 6, 4, we have 52. We have 1, 6, we have 37. All right. Um, the basic operations, minus, plus, times, and division cannot work here. Because 9 minus 5 plus 5 times 5 divided by 5 can give me 106. So I know I can't use any of this. The next, I can try square root or cube root or square. So let's try square. 5 square, 9 square. 5 squared means 5 times 5, which is 25. 9 squared means um, 9 times 9, which is 81. Okay, now I can come back and try addition. Adding 81 plus 25. Let's see if it will give me 106. 5 plus 1, 6. 8 plus 2, 10. 106. Oh, yeah, we've gotten the pattern. So 6 squared, 4 squared. 6 squared means 6 times 6, 36. Plus 4 squared means 4 times 4, 16. 36 plus 16 will give us 52. So now I've confirmed that the pattern 
has worked. So I have to go to the question. So I need to move to the next page for questions in session B. That's question number four. Based on what I did earlier, like the sample, so to get what is missing, I'll just do four square, four square. Four square means four times four, which is 16. To the right hand side, this four square means four times four, which is also 16. 16 plus 16 is 32, which is option A. Let's come down to question five. For question five, uh, we need we know we have to square the five, which is two and a five. But then this is missing. All we need to do is to subtract the square of five, which is two and a five, from what the total, which is eighty nine. So it will give me four sixty four. Square root of sixty four is eight. So I know that what is missing here is eight. And 8 squared means 8 times 8, 64. 64 plus 25 will give us 89. So the right answer is option A, which is 8. Question 6, you are going to use the same method. 11 squared, which is 11 times 11. A short way to do this. Um, 11, 1 plus 1 is 2. Put it in the middle. 11 times 11 is 1 to 1. You can confirm that. Now, to get what is missing, the total is 1 to 2. I need to subtract 1 to 1 from this. So this is 0. Sorry, 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 minus 2 is 0. 1 minus 2 so is 1. My answer is simply 1. So 1 square is 1. 11 square, 11 times 11 is um, 1 to 1. So 1 to 1 plus 1 is 1 to 2. So the right option is B, which is one. All right, um, let's move over to the next question, which is um, question number seven. Now we have a different pattern here. For this pattern, we have that sample C, five, five, five. So what's happening here? Let's um, start with the base number digits: five square, two square, four square. Five square means five times five, which is twenty-five. Now I think the pattern this must rhyme with what we have on top: five times five is twenty-five. Two square means two times two, which is four. It must rhyme with this: one times four is four. Four square means four times four, which is sixteen. It must rhyme with this 2 times 8 is 16. So let's go to the question here. 8 times 18 must rhyme with the base, the square of the base number. So 18 times 8. 8 times 8 is 64. 4, you carry 6. 8 times 1 is 8 plus 6. That's 144. The base number has to be 12 because 12 squared, which is 12 times 12, is 144. The right answer is C. Question number eight. All right, 10 square, which is 10 times 10 is 100. It must be the same with what you have on top. So 10 times 10 is 100 as well. So what is missing is option C, which is 10. We'll have to do the same for question number nine. Question number nine, six square, which is six times six is 36. So what is missing here, 36 divided by this 3, this has to be 12. So that 12 times 3 will give you 36 as well. The answer is 12, which is option C. All right, we are going straight to the next page, which is sample D. This is um, a new sample, a fresh one. So here, the pattern, okay, let's look at it again. What's happening here? 3 plus 1 will give me this 4. Why 2 times 3 will give me 6. It's plus and times. 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 times 1 is 1. Yes, I think we have the pattern. Let's use the pattern to solve question 10. So for question 10, 
I will just multiply 5 times 5, what is missing is 25. The right answer is E. Let's move down to question 11. What is missing? This has to be plus. This plus this. 17 and a half plus 2 and a half. Okay, so 17 plus 2 is 19. Half plus half is 1. 19 plus 1 is 20. The right answer is C. Question 12. Okay, for this, we need to find the value we can multiply with this 20 to get 100. So it has to be 5. Since 5 times 20, we give us 100. Or you simply divide 100 by 20, it will give you back 5. And for question 13, this is missing. We know that this plus this should give us this. So 15 here, which is same thing as 15.0, all whole number have decimal like 0. 0.0. Subtract from this, we give you this, minus 10.5. Borrow 1 from 5, we reduce this to 4, put the 1 here, 10 minus 5 is 5. Then bring down the 4, 4.5, the right answer is B. If this is 4.5, then 4.5 plus 10.5 should give us 15, 5 plus 5, 10, 0, carry 1, put it here, 4 plus 1, 5, bring down 1, that means it's correct. Thank you very much, this is how much you can take for today's lesson. In the next lesson, for quantitative reasoning, we have 40 questions, but I'm going to break them into three parts. In um, lesson 2, I'm going to start from sample E, and then... Um, take as much samples as I can and then eventually complete it so we can go to um, the other aspect which is vocational aptitude. Thanks. Bye.